Hello right. everybody. Today we're gonna be playing Berlin. Looks like we got Ministry Garden Invasion. It's pretty interesting. Presenting this gameplay to you is Joshua and Joshua. Hello, Joshua. <laughs> My name is Joshua. It is not Joshua. Okay, well, I'll just call you Joshua then. Alright, let me readjust my sound just a little bit more here. There we go. We'll All turn right. it down nice and low. Perfect. Now I can hear you. So Something interesting about the Hitler bunker in this map is you can actually find the like pit that Hitler's body was burnt in. Really? You're going to have to show yeah, that to me. That would be interesting, I think, for our viewers as well. Um, but, uh, if we lose this invasion, which I hope we don't, but let's be honest, it's Berlin Axis. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll show you if we get to Hitler's bunker. Absolutely. And we will, as you know, because this is Berlin here's and we are playing Germany. Tip. Here's a hidden tip for this building. Um, if you go up to the top floor, there, there's more floors than you think. If you go up to the top floor with an engineer... Um, and go all the way to the right, you can actually place the spawn beacon in the house because it's far away enough vertically. Really? Okay, I'm gonna have you show me that real quick and uh, right, I'd just like to uh, explain just to our viewers to what it is we're doing here today. We're discussing, uh, you know, the developers released a uh, an update about the, some new content that's coming to the Berlin campaign, correct? Just some uh, uh, weapons? Yes, uh, we're gonna start by just looking at the dev vlogs off screen here. I'll, I'll outline you guys what we're looking at. Boom, look at that rally point. Isn't that awesome? That is cool. And we can build them right next to each other now, which I think is awesome. Can you see my head turn when I do this? Does my head oh, turn? Oh shit! What? Yeah, it's moving! Yeah. Here, what's the key to that? What's the key to do that? Uh, the default, I think, is C key, but I bind mine to spacebar, so that way, hey, so check this out. Take. Take a look at me That's right here. Answer. Say if I'm hiding. See how you can see my gun? Let's just take a quick little look. See how you can see my gun here? Can mm -hmm. you see it now? Not really. You're hiding it. Okay, yes. And if you come oh, in here and take a look at me. That. You can, like, actually pose. Yes, you can pose and hide your weapon if you're expecting company. See how quickly I snapped to you there? If I heard you That's coming cool. and you were an enemy, yes, absolutely. That's uh, a new feature, by the way. That wasn't in game a few patches ago, for sure. Because I, I yeah, that's in War Thunder at C2 to look around without moving. Yes. Anyway, we lost the point. Not really surprising for Berlin. I mean, shit, we didn't even have a chance to do anything. <laughs> you well, do this if you shoot the window panes. You can jump through them. It's very useful as well. Yes, and anyway, we're not I'm, we're not going to worry too much about winning today. This is mostly just about having a little discussion and just displaying I what is coming soon-ish, uh, hopefully sooner than later, is this campaign in open beta, correct? Yeah, yeah we what's, what we're going to start with in the dev vlog is, um, let's see here, Berlin. Okay, the first batch of Battle of Berlin is level 16, the USSR gets the Yak-3. Now, that's a Ooh. decent fighter. I it's love the Yak-3. Nothing too special. It has a 20 millimeter and two, um, two 12.7. So I mean, it gives you your average firepower <clears throat> for a fighter. A little bit, it'll be good enough, kinda. But yeah. definitely, you're gonna want to see the upgrades. I'll tell you guys about it after. Cool. And then Germany cool, gets cool. the BF G14, which and I'm excited one, about. That is my favorite 109. I don't know about you, but that thing is a gorgeous machine. Gorgeous. It is a fast. It is a fast one on it. It has a turbocharger in it, which other ones uh, they don't lack, but it is a better turbocharger. I'm looking um, forward to employing boom and zim tactics with it for sure, or falcon strikes, whichever way you want to <laughs> slice that one. Yeah. It looks. And then there's the the Russian flamethrower that looks like the most in the gun. Honestly, so cool looking. Like that's such a good idea. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's just your standard flamethrower. Germany gets the fl uh, Flammenwerfer uh, 35. I mean, it's not the upgraded version, but it's a flamethrower and it's Berlin. And you know how small Berlin is. Yeah, I was so. going to say, I'm looking forward to the flamethrowers more than anything, just because I understand, or at least I th assume, that it's just going to balance uh, the gameplay a little bit. Because you'll have... Assume... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, don't worry about interrupting me. Please don't apologize. All right. All right. Um. So in Berlin, 
uh, people just keep discounting weapons from other campaigns, but they need to realize it's a different map. It's going to be a completely different meta. Shit you'd never look at in the actual, like, other campaigns is going to be king and Berlin, and that's already proven. Interesting, Definitely interesting. Definitely already proven. <laughs> oh, I'm going to try shooting down an enemy plane with my Stuka right here. I got 420 Go millimeters. 420 millimeters, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I am a child, but everybody already knows that. That's what the doctor does. I'm just kind of a little clown, and I just try and put a smile on people's face. That's why I'm here. But these new weapons Thank are... God. <laughs> oh, I killed it. Oh, what? We lost... What? Isn't that isn't that weird that Germany loses in Berlin? Isn't that just isn't that just out of the ordinary? <laughs> I dumped. Thank God weapons don't jam for planes, but I dumped my entire mags into a, uh, just a normal lag, and it did nothing against them. Isn't that frustrating? Well, Hopefully the devs fix it. Uh, anyway, uh, level eighteen. You know, you get the DPM, you know, that is that is the Russian machine gun of World War II with the pan magazine on top and the flash suppressor. Isn't the uh, Rainbow Six Arbery, what is his name, is it, I can't remember, he, he uses that weapon, right? Is it Tachanka? It's been yes, forever yes. since I played that game, but he uses that weapon, and it's fun. It's a big, bad machine gun, and it has, uh, it says it's easier to use... Faster reloading and a pistol grip, so less recoil. Now, Abs I don't absolutely. know if you like, have played the normal DP, but it's already a stellar gun. I mean, well, it's if it's amazing. anything like the Madsen, I'm already excited, to be honest with you. Uh, I love the Madsen. Honest, it's, basically, it's basically a better Madsen. Like, it's like a direct upgrade. Perfect. Oh, I'm, I'm all about that. So I'm no just... Way. Oh, you're Damn it. <laughs> I'm just going to build a little rally point, somewhere not completely obvious, I guess. I, I suppose this will work. <laughs> but yeah, that look, look mechanic, <clears throat> that look, look mechanic that I was showing you, does yeah, it, isn't yeah, that, that nice? Looks cool. it, it, it looks cool. It, it looks cool. Like and while you're sprinting, you can sprint straight towards an objective and check your, your sides, right? You have more perspective. So you don't get surprised as much by, you know, flankers or campers or whatever. You can just peer War around the Thunder. corner. War Thunder has actually had that feature for years, and it works amazing because you actually can get, like, an overview of the battle. So it's just very nice to see in another Gaijin game. You know, it's something they're doing right again. That is one thing and that I like about them sh uh, sharing a publisher is that they have that, you know, that wisdom and, you know, those, those tools to draw on. You know, it, it gives them a kind of a leg up. Yeah, they have, like, the models for War Thunder, even. So, like, um, War Thunder actually added a few enlisted weapon. I'm going to kill that plane. War Thunder actually added a few weapon models from enlisted that you can put as decorations in your tanks. Oh, really? So, like, that's, that's interesting. A lot of cooperation between the devs, which is just amazing to see. You, you love to see dev cooperation. Yeah, I mean, anything they can do to help each other out in that aspect is going to be better for both of them in the long run, for sure. I think they share a PR team, which is just, it's overall, they have all that wisdom directly. That IL-2 will be going down. He is smoking, so he won't last me. Um, in awesome. Germany, it w you, you, you know you know Germany couldn't go without this. They get the MG-42, because, I mean, that thing served every campaign past 1941, let's be real. It is a cornerstone of the German military. I wasn't aware that anybody had an issue with it. Wow, that T-3485, that was a hell of a shot. My goodness. No, no, people don't have much <laughs> issue with it, but I'm just saying, uh, it's like a common thing, like in World War II, you know, it's not Germany right. without it. Interesting. Yeah, no, I agree. It is an iconic weapon. You wouldn't expect to fight for the Americans on the beaches of Normandy or Canadians or whomever without, you know, one of their weapons from their country, you know, something that is recognizable to the masses, of course. That's one this of the reasons why people are attracted to these sort of games. This completes Berlin. I mean, the other stuff's cool, but MG32, it's not in Germany light war without it. I and agree. then <clears throat> we have. Let me get it loaded up here. We have the next patch. Um, I'm oh, sorry, the next devlog. The ME410. Now, a big difference is it actually had a 500 kilogram in the closed beta, um, in like the first phase of it. Now I'm going to tell you right now, 
I'm so glad that's not the case anymore because oh my god, it was ridiculous. <clears throat> I I think the 250 kilograms are uh, still <laughs> just they're right on the border, right? They're right on the border of just being a little too much, and that's coming from somebody who enjoys uh, planes and ground pounding. I lo- I used to do that in War Thunder quite a bit, and I'm sure a lot of people listening <laughs> are gonna judge me for that. But you know, uh, there's a reason they're included in the game because it is a game play style, correct? That's just it. It's just part of the game. Like, yeah, you may dislike it, but it's the game itself. So you yeah, exactly. Kinda, it wouldn't be the game without it. And people take it for granted how di- how different it would be for the worst if they didn't have planes. Sometimes an enlisted need planes to break points. And I, everyone's been in the point where they thank a plane. Everybody's oh, been in position for a capture or for uh, opening up a position. Okay, I'm just going to drop a little joy right here. I'm pretty sure I saw a tank, but I guess we'll find out here shortly. No, uh, no yeah, tank. Yeah, ME410, so glad. I mean, it did not need a 500 kilogram. You could literally wipe out the whole entire Berlin map, no, and I'm we, not joking. I we don't need that. We do not need that. If anything, uh, in my opinion, we could stand to have some airfields or something to land just to artificially increase the time that it takes to rearm, which would decrease the amount of cast, but also... Uh, Pilots such as myself, we love doing that. If I could take off and land, yeah. oh my goodness, it's so immersive, especially in hardcore, when it's all you just, have are the instruments in front of you. It's just fun, and it would severely nerf planes. But I mean, everyone's calling for a nerf anyways, a big nerf. So I mean, give them, give the people what they want at that point is what I say. Right. Think about it. I, I, I've been kind of kicking around in my head. We've you know that we've been hearing talk about or at least a lot of uh, users asking about expanding player limits. Um, perhaps if we had more, just hear me out, I know you're, <laughs> if we had a few more planes but had that artificial lengthening of the rearmament through the airfield mechanic, it would be a little more dynamic because you wouldn't just be relying on one decent fighter and one decent attacker. You'd have, say, maybe two and two or two and one, one attacker, two fighters, perhaps. Or perhaps another slot for like a reserve aircraft, like a, you know, like a, what was that, a Kitty Hawk, is the P-40, or am I mistaken? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's for America. Um, and what I think is, that would be a good idea if they managed to increase the players p- per battle. Yes. That would be a good, I, I think we could have full scale, like, ground war style battles. Oh, I, I hope that that is the future. Uh, by the way, T-3045 on point down. Yeah, it's it's annoying me. Thank you. Um, <laughs> sometimes, they, sometimes they drive them into this damn garage, and they can literally shoot while they're stuck. And that just is so Russian to me. I'm like, that is something Russians would do, is just well, to, like drive their car into it like this. Well, I mean, uh, there is, there is a reason why they're so su- successful in their attacks against Germany, right? Oh, my goodness. Talk about getting one shot uh, in weird circumstances. Isn't that weird how you have to put 100 rounds into the enemy plane, but they just tap you one little time, just one little time, and you're done? It feels, it feels like German planes are a lot more fragile, just just from experience. I don't have any proof to back that up, but just from playing them. Um, speaking of uh, Russian planes being intense, IL-2M Type 3 Rush is getting. Now, Ooh. if you're not familiar with your tank mm. cannons, that thing has two tank cannons mounted on the under side of the wing. That sounds amazing. That sounds absolutely something I would like to play with. Like, you know this LaBelle I mean, rifle? I love this LaBelle yeah, rifle. I really do. It's sad I don't get to play with it more gun. often. It was a good gun in real life, and it definitely shows in game. Like, It's a little old, but I mean, a lot of the weapons. The Car 98 is from the 1800s, even. It's right absolutely. The and it served um, in the Great War and World War II. I mean, it's just that good of a rifle, right? And basically every World War II bolt action uses the Mauser action from the original Mauser needle gun. So right, bolt action rifles are pretty much exactly the same and have been at, th- at this point in World War II. They've been the same since the, the invention, really. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh, T-34 drove down. You remember how I predicted that? <laughs> Well, I'm just going to introduce myself in my little uh, debt pack. I really hope I actually remember to load that. Nope, I did not remember to load that. Let's see if I have... I oh, yeah, I have pack. at least one. I got a debt pack. He's going to wipe out the rest of my team, and we're, we lost the point, but I'm going to take him out. 
That's fine. I'm kind of expecting to, to lose you most of these, and one. again, that's not the point of what we're doing here. Yeah. I see him. I see him. I'm, I see him. I'm I see him. I'm just gonna give him a little love here. Yep. He's got his commander sticking under the turret. <laughs> okay. That is a Russian thing to do. Like when they're right in front of us, just <laughs> pulling that commander out. That's cute. They have to. The <laughs> visibility in the T-34 was just trash. I mean, even in real life, they would be sticking their heads out during a battle. Well, I mean, that's. I, I imagine that's still done today. I mean, T-72s apparently are still used worldwide, glass. correct? Yeah, apparently the glass was still better than the T-34. It was basically, you could just see light and dark. Like, it was just enough to, like, stop you from hitting stuff. Interesting. Have you ever peered through welding goggles before, or uh, a welding mask? Yeah, where you can like you yeah. can see if you're welding, but besides that, it's like worthless. just light and dark. Exactly. That that is it. That is that would be interesting to try and drive a machine around like that. I don't think I'd want to do that. And that's why the commander sticks his head out ninety percent of the time. Yeah, that would not be my favorite job. Just poking your head out of a little cupola and uh, everybody and their mama shooting at you. <laughs> Yeah, they just out here. They always swarm. Um, but yeah, the IL-2 they're getting, that's two tank cannons, and it can actually carry uh, rockets and bombs at the same time. So, yeah. Speaking of bombs, I that's just got bombed through the wall, so that's fun. <laughs> I'm going to give those Russians just a little grenade pack there, yeah? Um, but yeah, that's definitely bombs, rockets, and tank cannons. That's literally a flying tank that the Russians are getting. Oh, Beautiful. there we go. That was a good kill. Yeah. Yeah. Um, look at that. We're both rocking first and second. That's good to see. You love to see it, honestly. Absolutely. You know, you mostly you get those uh, positions, and this is one thing I like to talk about in this little podcast we're doing. It's just when you're enjoying the game with a friend of yours, and you're just having fun, right? That's how you do well. You don't do well by getting angry at the game. <laughs> that never goes yeah, well, like does it? There's some stuff like us losing the point that is just our team's fault, but, you know, we're doing good enough. Yeah, um, yeah this, this now, is fine. The main event that everybody has been looking forward to for USSR. I don't, I'm don't. i sure a few of our people listening are going to be USSR mains for Berlin. PPD40, I teased you, it's the <laughs> second main event. It's not the PPSH, but that's coming. Um, the PPD-40 is coming to Berlin drum mag version. So Speaking of PPD-40s... Go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I just had to kill that gentleman real quick, that's all. He had a PPD-40. Um, yeah, PPD-40 drum mag. So you already have the stick mag in-game, and you already have the premium one. Well, introduce this one to your collection, and you're going to be able to have a shit load of PPDs, essentially. So oh, yeah. So you get ready for that. And then uh, Germany, we're getting the... F mm, I want to say the first, but it's honestly not. It's like the third assault rifle in game. But the first, like, official... You know how the carbine, everyone's so nuanced about it? The VV-15, yeah, yeah. that uses the Kurz bullet. Like, the first official purpose-made assault rifle bullet. And it's only semi-auto, but 30 rounds in the chamber, same bullet as the STG-44, you know, the legendary monster, the AK-47 of World War II, if you will. That bullet's going to pack a punch, and it's going to be able to fire fast. So I'm just a... think of... And it's an assault weapon, so here's what I do. With my assaulters, we're going to lose. Good game. <laughs> Good game. With my assaulters, you know, assaulters get shotguns. They get SMGs, and you know they can use the bolt actions. You know, everyone has access to the basic bolt action. Right, right, um, right. I always keep a bolt action or two, because you need medium-range weapons besides just SMGs sometimes. <clears throat> I mean, it's important. Let me just level up my guys here. Um, Take your time. Yeah. But this, you can replace, you know, your shitty bolt action, and you can have... A, an assault rifle marksman rifle basically since it's semi-automatic it's gonna be so good for point shooting have you uh, heard people, any have you heard any rumors about the uh capable like the impact of the bullet or how much hit power it's gonna have or is that kind of just gonna be have to we'll have to see i think in i i it was in the early closed alpha you know they had a closed alpha for berlin once um months ago and I think, 
Um, I think. Uh, I would imagine oh, it'd be similar eight, to the seven or eight. Seven or eight sorry, it's seven oh, or eight good. damage. I think is what it is. So, which is, I mean, it makes sense. That's what it. It's a smaller bullet, but it's not too small, basically. Yeah, so we could expect it to possibly down, possibly a little over 100 meters with two hits. That's a, that's a, more than acceptable. I mean, if you line up those headshots, that should be a one one shot uh, kill, correct? I can't remember if headshots are double damage or. You made a graph yeah, on all that, didn't I you? I think in this game, or one shot kill even with pistols, because I mean, it's a it's it's, it's a, a headshot. Head As it it's should be, be, yes. Uh, however, sometimes helmets will deflect pistols, but that's really it. I don't think they'll be deflecting the uh, occurs. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. We'll find out, I suppose. Um, here I just gotta get back. Yeah, the VG though, and then something the German players. I know they're probably crying that Russia got the PPD drum mag right now, hearing me say that. Well, I'm assuming they've read them all, but you know, just for drama's sake. Um, <laughs> Germany does get something to soothe the wound a little bit. Here, I'll start another game and then discuss it. Sure, they sure, get sure. The FG42, you know, the paratrooper uh, battle rifle. I don't like calling it an LMG. It's not. It's a battle rifle, really. Right. Yeah, it's not it's large enough to be considered a light machine gun. No. Um, and it's going to be available. For, it says it allows you to use it functionally as an assault rifle. So Germany basically gets two assault rifles in, in a row. Pardon me, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, please don't apologize. You're fine. Oh, well, I'm Canadian. You know what happens. <laughs> well, <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> um, and then for engineers, the AVS-36 is Russia's contender. It's no FG-42 by any means. But a 15-round fully automatic rifle—that's nothing to you know laugh about. That's still gonna—that's still gonna put a hole through your chest. Absolutely. I'm curious and, what the damage profile will be on that. Uh, AVS was a larger round, was it not? I mean, if I remember AVS, correctly, did, didn't the Russians try and utilize uh, similar calibers in most of their rifles? Yeah, I think it fires a most round, which is bigger than the—I think it's bigger than the FG for sure. Um, now. This is something else. In the closed beta, there's a sniper version of the AVS. So Ooh. the FG, the FG is meant to be fired more in semi-auto. This Russian gun is as well. So that's gonna be, that's gonna be an interesting meta. Absolutely. Uh, you, can, <laughs> you can have that full auto capability, but you're gonna also not want to use it unless you have to because I mean, there goes your ammo. Oh, absolutely, but I see people all the time, and I'm sure you do too, where they're uh, swinging that FG around in full auto, and you're just like, but if you just tap fire that son of a bitch, you, might <laughs> you know, you might hit a few of those targets once in a while, but you know. Yeah, they, they use them like they're straight up machine guns, and I'm like, well, I mean, if you run out of ammo, it's not my problem, but I'd rather you help the team out a little bit more, <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. It's a team effort, and it always it always is. We're all trying to win and get our ex experience correct. And when you see somebody, yep. when you see somebody going full auto, you just kind of want to pull them aside and be like, "Hey, bud, what what are you doing right there?" <laughs> now wait till they find out in real life. You can only, you only carry like two or three mags for a whole duration of combat. <laughs> um, yeah. But basically, uh, something I love about this map is the Ministry of the Interior, whatever building this is, is literally just a shelled out ruin. There's not even a building left at this point. Like, that's how desperate the fighting is. is we're fighting over what? Like a pile of rocks. But, you know, that's Berlin for you. It's do or die. And that's the way that uh, the war... Or what the war turned into at some point. It's it's very interesting to uh, kind of reenact it. I kind of take this game as as a reenactment, right? We're basically acting out these battles that did happen. It's virtual, I'll say it's a virtual museum slash simulation. Is your yes? It is like a simulation of the Battle of Berlin, which is just no other game is is like that. Not not Call of Duty World at War. Good for storytelling. But a game like this actually makes you feel like you're in the soldier's shoes. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree. Oh, you should have um, seen that little kill streak I just went on. That was pretty cool. 
Oh my god, European Canadians in our game. Really? Oh game. my goodness. That. Isn't that a cool yes. deck, huh? Oh. He's probably <laughs> uh, hyped for the release that's gonna happen sometime this week, so I mean, yeah, I don't blame him. Oh my um, goodness. Uh, T3485 is uh, decimating <laughs> our position. I literally just lost my whole Labelle squad to it. Obviously, I don't stream snipe, but hey, try to impress them. We'll, we might get in a video with your opinion. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I, I don't really sweat the celebrities, you know. They're just people too, right? Yeah. Um. Here we go. Uh, next, we're going to look at Battle of Berlin 22-23. to 23. Beautiful. And we got the SU-85 for Russia. Now, some people are saying they're not excited about this, but you know what i got to say is... Hold your horses, you know. Uh, even if it's out, you know, you don't have it unlocked. Now, I know you don't. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? obviously. Uh, we, we have a... Uh... <laughs> Excuse me, it's to gonna interrupt. Take, it's gonna take a week to unlock it, like, or, or just even in like a few days, because it's it's level 22. I mean, even if you're at level 15 now, that's a few days away. So yeah, don't judge it before it's in game, is what I'm trying to say, I guess. Because yeah, the, and <clears> that's what we're here to talk about, right? My eight years of playing War Thunder, there can be a lot of surprises. Absolutely, I just killed the European Canadian, by the way, just so you know. I just shot him while he's sprinting across the field. That was kind of cool. You know, I'm surprised he's playing for Russia. Uh, they're they're winning pretty much every game, aren't they? That doesn't sound like fun. <laughs> to be completely real with you, as YouTubers are playing them because, hey, they win every battle, so it's good content. I suppose. I suppose. Let's see if that Stuka seat's freed up. Yes, it is. I'm going to drop a little joy on these uh, Russians here, since they're just whooping on us. Um, Germany get the Panzer 4 slash 70, and I've used this tank in War Thunder. It's not, it's not the good. Local mm. <laughs> it's not the local style version. It has those very flat plate in the front. So, yeah, I mean, the, I'm the flat nice plate's going to be an issue, for sure. I agree. All. So what I'm thinking, I'm gonna be a little sneaky and unorthodox here, but using it as a, like a sort of roadblock on t like the tunnels, for example, or some oh. cover. Oh my goodness, that was a good hit. Good job. Thank you, sir. Um, that was seven kills. Uh, did I hit yeah, that T34? Did I hit him? I don't think so. I think I'm being shot at by him right now. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna take him out right here. I'm just gonna give him just a little bit of boop. Just right, just like that. Just ease it in there. T34 uh, down. Oh, nice okay. job. That was awesome. Thank um, you. Yeah. I mean, the Panzer IV S70, of course it's not a Panther, but I'm just glad to have the variety because... Same. I'll be I, glad to see I it. Think, I think having more stuff... And, you know, you get bored of flying... You get bored of driving the Panther eventually. I mean, let's be real. Everyone gets bored of doing the same amount of stuff, so it's just nice to have. I love it to see it. I would like, to, I would love to see, uh, especially in this campaign, just uh, vehicles that you wouldn't expect to see, <laughs> right? Older stuff, you know, just just add variety, right? We have older guns, you know. It'd be cool to drive a Hetzer around, right? That could probably bounce a couple 85s, maybe. I don't know if you angle it. Oh, who knows? It was amazing. <laughs> the net in Berlin. Did it? Now, see that that would be a perfect perfect vehicle for like just in a low level tank destroyer that you can get into. Ever. Just about everybody knows the Hetzer from World of the Tanks, right? That's the first time I was introduced to it outside of history books. Yep. Um, and they're going to say, oh, man, there's no cover right now. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it all got bombed. Um, and what I'll say right now is... I see another uh, T-34. Hey there, bud. There, every, everything's full of surprises. A tank that you might think is pretty unassuming... T-34 down. And you might not even notice it if you if you just skip it. So just don't don't assume until something's released is what I'll say. Right, because right. Because it can it can impress you. How many people underestimated the Stewart and then figured out, oh my goodness, this thing actually is pretty good. <laughs> it's better than the Puma. My spawn beacon's about to get artilleried. So this T-34 is about to get destroyed. 
There she is. There's another T-34 down. Um... <laughs> Now, the Russians, they get another cool machine gun. I mean, two machine guns within, like, five levels. I mean, hey, that's pretty cool, actually. Um, that is. <clears throat> Go ahead, excuse the me. The one they get is, it's called the DT-29. Now, if that sounds familiar, it's because it's actually a tank machine gun that got ripped off of a tank. And then Ooh. is being used by the infantry, essentially. Now, I like the sound of that. Now, everybody, I think, likes the sound of taking a machine gun off a tank and carrying it around. <laughs> I hope that it's they... It's a lot uh... lighter. It has, for example, a very rudimentary buttstock. Because, I mean, you don't need a buttstock when you're in a tank. No, um, it's supported by the... Uh, 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 what do they call that? I can't remember. The, the sponson? Yeah, the mounting. Yeah, excuse me. You know how my um, memory is. But at the same time, since it's lighter, it's going to also be a lot easier to carry around, which, I mean, that's going to be awesome. And it, it has a 63-round double drum, uh, like, double-stacked drum magazine. Ooh. So that's that gonna is going to be you, interesting. That's going to give you some firepower. Absolutely. Okay, I spot another T-34, and I'm just going to kind of get a little better angle on this approach here. He's on the bridge, correct? Yeah, I see him. I see him on the bridge. Yeah, I'm going to get a rally, please. Okay, I have um, a Russian shooting at me, so expect me to be one-shotted. Yep, one-shotted again. Isn't that no weird? Worries, Isn't that weird how you always get one-shotted at the Stuka? <laughs> ah, that's fine. Like, characteristically weak. Uh, regardless... Wow, isn't the Reichstag beautifully rendered in this? Look at, oh my god. I'm just looking at it, it looks like I'm looking, like, it looks like I'm in Berlin in World War II. That's Absolutely. That's something this game does that no other game does. Like, even Red Orchestra doesn't give you that exact same sense of, like, you're in the battle. Now, I'm not trying to fluff myself here, but did you watch that uh, hardcore video I just put out? I'm going to get a little screenshot here. I'm going to get just a I didn't little... Get, I'm gonna, I didn't right get here. a chance to do it because I was just doing other stuff. Oh no, I, I understand you're busy, but the only reason I bring it up, oh my goodness, <clears throat> is because I, I changed uh, some of my f uh, color filter settings to try and make uh, this gameplay look a little more like a movie, right? A little higher contrast, colors are washed just a little bit because this is the 40s, right? You'll see it yeah, when you I know you'll see it when I release this one. So I think I think I realize something's different about this game is it doesn't use filters. A battle can happen like right now. A battle can easily happen on a sunny, beautiful day. Exactly. It's not a war yeah. it's like in war movies where it's always like cloudy and dusty. Berlin was literally beautiful for half of it. Like it was like sunny days. Well, I mean, I imagine there's a reason the German people chose it as their capital, right? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it was the middle of summer that the battle of Berlin happened and so I mean it's not gonna be it's not gonna be obviously the air will be choked with like smoke but it's not gonna be cold it's summertime ooh uh yeah so the Russians are definitely uh making some good progress here I yeah, should put up I'm gonna attempt to uh get my men on position here real quick I think we're gonna, gonna lose this battle well, of course. I mean, it's to be expected. That is the yeah, way she is going for Germany. But, you know, I kind of like it, and I kind of hope that at least a little bit, not maybe as bad as it is right now. Hey, 7,000 experience. Isn't that funny? <laughs> nice. I, I always, I always get I something with seven. I wish we could keep it. <laughs> um, you know, but we're locked at level 15 for the time being. That's all right. Um, uh, yeah, though, it'll be nice to have some balance with these new weapons. And speaking of new weapons, I've got a little off tangent, but That's okay. the MG34, I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce that, um, 75 round magazine. Oh yes, now, the double drum? My goodness. Mm -mm. Not only does it fire slower, which in this case is an advantage, than the MG42, but this is a bigger magazine, so just imagine what you're going to be able to pull off with this. Yeah, people look at me. 
people look at me funny when I tell them I prefer the PPD, the first drum magazine fed uh, PPD you unlock in Moscow because it fires slower, right? I like that it fires slower because it's easier to control. You're not burning as many bullets in your bursts. I mean, it's all around, I think it's better. Sure, the faster fire rate in CQB, sure. But in 99% of all engagements, I prefer the slower firing one. It's just more and economical. I personally just enjoy um, I personally just enjoy solar fire rate in general. Like I like the German SMGs because it gives you more controls at farther distances. And it just sounds cooler. I mean, sure, everybody likes that burp, but uh, that pop, 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 pop. You, you know, that slow, handle. like a chugging. Uh, it's almost like a diesel engine, right? There, it feels it powerful. Yeah, it exactly. Mechanical. Yeah, it's like the difference between um, driving an electric car and one that, uh, you know, has a pretty damn loud engine in it. Yeah, and another thing is, um, I mean, you don't burn at your ammo. You'll actually be able to stay in the fight for longer because it only takes two bullets to kill, three bullets to kill someone with an SMG. So if you if you're putting ten bullets into them, that's overkill. Oh, absolutely, and that that that's something that always kind of gets me scratching my head when I see people talking about, you know, <laughs> these fast fire rate machine guns, and I'm just like, bud, you can kill them in one with one of those bullets or two, depending on the weapon. It's like, why, <laughs> why do you think you need 20 down range just to take down one target? It's weird, but you know, we all have our own ideas about this sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now this this is such a good thing the devs did is the five round conquest. Um, or the five points, sorry, is three points feels really limiting, but with this one, five points, and then half of it's half of it's close quarters, and then half of it's a field battle. This is this, one of the best maps in the game. This 100%. is the only conquest map that I actually enjoy, and I I would agree that the five points does add variety. The ability to either go inside or outside is nice. And uh, they're closer together. It's not a cluster. It's not a cluster F, if you excuse that expression. <laughs> yeah. And depending on how you're feeling, and you can switch in the middle of battle. Is some days I'll only spend my time in the Rex Chancellor building. I'll only do urban, and then other times I'll stay in the field the whole time because I feel like doing some rifle battles. It's yeah. just you can play how you feel, even if it's the same map. You won't get bored. And I... that's so rare in a game to have that much uh, uniqueness in a map where you can play in five different ways. Absolutely. And that's why the is so good is you can play in 20 different ways for any map, honestly. Yeah, and uh, one of the um, things that is nice, like uh, those T-34s I was popping in the last game, you know, they, uh, they provide uh, cover, right? So each battle is different because you'll get tanks that die in different locations, and a lot of times I'll set up my rally points behind tanks, right? And this a good is thing something to do. That, this is something they got from the Wisdom of War Thunder, is tanks don't disappear in War Thunder. War Thunder was like the one, besides World of Tanks, War Thunder was like one of the first games to do that, where you have stuff that just doesn't despawn. Um, so it's just really nice to see uh, that feature because it can change a map it can make a map completely different it'd be really it's exciting as if uh, uh, players really start getting into engineering because we'll see all sorts of pillow forts go up and uh, that'll add a lot I of love, dynamic I don't engagements. know if anyone who's listening to blood, but I love the concept of super fobs where you just put 500 sandbags and guns oh nice and you just <laughs> make the you just make the oh we got European Canadian on our team. He switched, I guess. Interesting. So he came over to the dark side. That's that's cool. Oh look, I took one. I took one decent hit, and now I'm effed. Well, I guess I'm going yep. down now. Yep. Isn't it terrifying when you're on a point <clears throat> alone and because there's one enemy in the point and it's like completely equal, but you can't see them? It's like where are the things? <laughs> it's terrifying when that happens. Yeah, I, that's why I like uh, that we have two different zoom levels for our aiming, because that uh, that one where it's kind of just, you're not really zoomed in at all for CQB, that really helps out, especially with the bolt action, you're trying to get somebody who's only maybe three or four meters away from you. You really have to be able to get a little more perspective on that shot, right? 
Yeah, you have the zoomed in one to just limit your field of view that little more and be ready. And then when an enemy comes in, you can you can hold the right click. And then when the enemy gets close, you can hold the hold breath key. And it just it lets you. It feels like real life zeroing in on a target. Because you know in real life you have to zero in on the target and be sure what you're shooting at. Which is one thing I love about hardcore mode, that little extra uh, authenticity of really having to watch your targets and watch their bodies fall in a certain direction is, is feels very real, true to life, right? Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, the devs definitely made this feel like a real battle, which, I mean, that's a, quite the accomplishment, all things considered. Because you know, this... I'm sure I'm not sure. I'm sure, I'm sure not every dev is like a military veteran. So, but them just like list probably. I'd assume they they talked to some veterans and got them to look at their gameplay and ask them how it was. It would and, only so, make know, I'm sense. Sure, I'm sure they got like the authentic feedback, which I, that just shows that they care about the game. You know, and I can appreciate that. Um. Anyway, sorry, I got off topic. Uh, Don't apologize. Planes. I'm, I'm more apologies to the viewers, honestly. <laughs> they might want to hear a little bit of stuff and my opinion on it. Okay, so oh, we're... Two new planes. We have the Bell P63 uh, Air Cobra. I think that's what the nickname is. Isn't uh, that yeah, going to be a cool Cobra. thing to try out? I love that thing. That 37mm can. Oh, my it's goodness. A cool it's a cool plane. It has the engine in the middle of it. And it's a propeller Ooh. plane. How weird is it? Uh, what so was... it, it's not front heavy, so just think about how balanced that's going to be as a plane. That's going to be interesting to do stall maneuvers in because of it not being nose heavy like most aircraft. I, I'm curious to see how that's going to play out. In real life, it was it was famous for being able to do crazy shit, basically. Yeah, I would imagine that a hammerhead would be easier if your weight was more balanced, right? Maybe, I don't know, yeah. I'd have to try it out. I'll have to do some testing on that. a more stable aircraft and easier to land because, I mean, you don't have the nose front heavy. Um, here, I'm covering you with my MG-34, can you see that? Isn't that, like, badass? Yes, it is. I, I love seeing... Wait, we're Germany, right? That was you. I expected to see green tracers. <laughs> Interesting. Well, there are, oh. green tracers. I'm pretty sure they are. I think they are green. It, it may be that color filter that I put up. That's probably what it is. No, no not on the 34. I'm looking... The 42 is the one of the green filters. That's the one you see in most of the Okay, yeah, that makes a little more sense. That makes a lot more yep. sense. A I trick like... for people watching, by the way, is you can actually request ammo from your AI. It doesn't matter what gun they have, they'll always give you an extra cup of ammo if you're at zero. Really? Oh, I did not know that. Yep. See, you learn something new every day. Good incentive to keep your AI alive because they can hook you up with a meg. I usually try and keep them alive so they can hook me up with a meg kit because I'm always getting shot. <laughs> oh yeah, being able to heal humans is nice. Not many people use it, but it's just it's just nice to have a lot of this stuff, even if you you, you don't personally use it a lot. Oh, agreed. Uh, by the way, that T-34 is definitely looking our direction, so be mindful of that. Alright. Uh, yeah, the Air Cobra, though, weird plane. I mean, yes, oh, it definitely served over Berlin. Man, do you see the kill feed right now? That's what the MG-34 does. Oh, yeah, I'm watching. Oh, and there's that T-34 again. Boy, he is just not a very friendly guy. I don't think I'm going to survive this. Here we go. The scariest part is when you run out of ammo on a machine gun and you see a horde enemy is charging. That's that's why the 75 round is going to be so good. You're going to have 25 extra rounds. That's nothing to like just laugh about. That's like that's an impressive amount of uh, firepower you're packing. I would be so happy if they could. Uh... I mean, the animation for it, I imagine, would be difficult. But imagine uh, if it, you know, like a. A strap on the LMG that so you could just sling it to your weight, you know, on your waist, on your hip, as they would. It makes it a little yeah, easier to cart that thing around. Yeah, that'd be cool. But I don't know. Uh, fabric is very difficult to render in most games. Oh. 
for oh, sure. Goodness. And but I mean, hey, if anyone can do it, Gaijin can. I mean, you've seen what the Dagor engine can do. That's what this game's running. It's a fantastic game engine. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Uh, I heard I heard somewhere that uh, terrain deformation uh, is possibly uh, possibly being talked about. It's just a rumor. You know, every, everything is just conjecture I mean, at this point. With snow, actually, if you want a good example. Oh, they had to smoke out the whole hallway, as you can see, because you see I'm just still laying down MG fire. I haven't stopped one bit. Oh, yeah, I, I'm enjoying this right here. This is fun. We're just we're just tearing them up, bud. <laughs> when you have the ammo crate built, you can lay down as much MG fire as you want because you got ammo. And people need to build ammo crates more. They take no time to build isn't that weird? And doesn't that make you scratch your head when someone's like, can someone just build an ammo crate? And you're like, hey, bud. <laughs> <laughs> you know you can put an engineer in literally every squad, right? You're like, you know that, don't you? You should always... I don't understand how everyone doesn't have at least one engineer in every squad. Like, well, It only you, makes sense. When, even in real life, you'd always have the guy that can hook you up with stuff. Exactly, so yeah. Oh, yeah, carry. combat engines are, your, are like your little angels. They blow up bridges for you, they build your pillow forts, they bring you your ammunition. <laughs> they do all sorts of shit like that. They're pretty useful. They'll and be your best that. friend. That machine gun hold though, I've only got two deaths, 25 kills, and we still held the hallway. We actually are winning the battle now. Isn't that cool? That. Isn't that cool? That's very cool indeed. I'm gonna change position with my machine gun here, and I'm gonna go outside uh, you know, like the court, uh, you know, in front of the pillars of the Reich Chancellor. I'm gonna go out there and cover yes. us on the outside. So, like, uh, it looks like uh, we're cap. Wow, we're capping. E Are we capping out the Russians? This is unheard yeah. of. I don't. I don't know if this is real life or if I'm just <laughs> dreaming. But <laughs> I'm okay with it. I'm okay with this. Um, but, but then. Germany gets the BF 109 G 14 armed with Mark 108. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's the normal BF 109 G 14 with the 20 millimeter, you know, the two 13s, and mm -hmm. then it has two 30 millimeter. That's the MK 108 with armor piercing. Uh, actually, I think the tongue skin rounds. Ooh. So you can be penetrating. The T 34s do not have strong roofs. You're gonna be penetrating a T-34 with that. Interesting, Easy. and I would, I would assume if you approach it from a 45 degree angle, because the armor is sloped at roughly 45 degrees, you'd be hitting it flat on. So you'd think you'd be able to penetrate the side armor too. I mean, you probably have to get in a little close, but if you want to kill a T-34, I guess you're just gonna to have to make do, right? Yeah. Oh, my AI plinked that guy with a G-43. People say AI sucks in this game. My AI engineer got four kills on his own with just a one-star G43. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. Like, sometimes they suck, of course, but there's so many times where they actually will, like, save you. I could use one to save me right about now. <laughs> this thing is when you lose them. That's the thing. Something that teams need to realize if sometimes if you're down to one guy as a defender, just kill yourself. If your whole team's alive but down to one man, the enemy's gonna have a distinct advantage over you. Oh, absolutely. I, I try to keep that in mind. So I'll try to. Uh, I, I guess it's probably a, a weird thing to say, but I'll try and burn my last guy if it isn't that if it is that situation. But sometimes every now and then, if I hold on to him and just with that one guy, sometimes I'll get you know 10, 12, 20. <laughs> every now and then, 20 sometimes kills. It's just like hey, <laughs> All right? Sometimes, of course, yeah, it's in your best interest to do so. But there's sometimes where it's just don't bother. Um, but yeah, armor piercing 30 millimeters is gonna be. Quite interesting. And I, now, finally, our last one we got today, or yesterday, yeah, it doesn't matter. I actually wrote the day. Now, the 24th level is going to be the SVT-40 for the Russians Ooh. with the sniper scope. Now, SVT-40, it's a good gun. It's very quiet. It, it sounds like it just it snaps when it shoots. a very quiet gun. So that alone is an advantage for a sniper rifle. You want to be quiet, obviously. Interesting. Was that? Uh, did they like install baffling or something like that into the barrel? I don't know a whole lot about 
the I actual mechanics of the no SVT. Clue. I just know in game it's quiet. It just is quiet. I'll be looking forward to trying that. And especially and once we. <clears throat> Go ahead, please. Yeah, sorry. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm apologizing to the viewers mostly. I know they don't want to hear me interrupt. <laughs> Um, and then Germany gets the G43 sniper scope. Now, besides being used for radio men, that was the, that's why the G43 was put into service, is it was meant to be a designated marksman rifle. So you get to see it in its intended purpose in Berlin, finally. Isn't that cool? I mean, I still prefer the iron sights, and, you know, everybody has their personal preference when it comes to that. But, I mean, if you I want love... to put a scope on it, hey, go for it, baby. Knock I love the G43. Out. I do it's too. Honestly a good gun. I like I it too. more than. The, call me a traitor here if any American is listening, but I don't like <laughs> the gear in the in game at least. You know, I just don't like the iron sights, and it feels it feels bulky. You know how most semi autos are like a little more sleek, and they are just like lighter guns. Yeah, the, the Grand was definitely a, a pig. It was a pig. Heavy. Yeah. So in game, that's reflected. It just feels ridiculous. Um, and then you have the Yak-9T, the fridge launcher, as some people call it. Um, Love that name. <laughs> it's a small little fighter, and it has an armor-piercing 37... Oh, great, we already lost the bridge. Armor-piercing 37 millimeter in the nose. And, uh, if I recall, yeah, it has one machine gun for a backup. So, I mean... I mean, hey, it's better than nothing. At least you have a backup to do, like, anti-fighter attacks. If, you know, alongside bombing. So, well, nothing to complain about there. Good absolutely. Gun Is the Russian 50, and correct me if I'm wrong, and I, I probably may be mispronouncing, but I've heard it spoken enough times. It's called the Dushka, right? Yes, this is a, this is a different one. This is, a, I think it's oh, called okay. the Berezin. Ooh. The Berezin. Okay. The Russians had different ones, unlike they were more com complicated than America. <laughs> nice, nice job. <laughs> um, Thank you. Yeah. Overall, though, they had the Dishka and they had the Berezin, uh, and then Germany is going to get the BF109 G10, which also has gun pods, just like the Premium, but it differs a little bit. Look at that double Panzer four charge. This is gonna be a good defense. Hello there, Mr. T thirty four. I got a little surprise for you there, buddy. Just hold your breath. He'll be over in a second. <laughs> Here's what it says about them. At this level, you'll get access to some of the most powerful weapons in the ruins of Berlin. Now, the PPSH forty one, the main event. Russians, you know, if you've played Call of Duty World of War. You know, brrr, that thing wipes the floor with Germans. That is going to be exciting to play with, my goodness. And yeah, the, the faster fire rate I'll probably have to get used to, but, uh, you know, I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll grow to love it. So just think about how fast that shit is going to fire in a battle. It's going to be crazy. Uh, the the memes that you'll be seeing of people literally wiping nine-man squads with a single drum is going to be uh, uh, pure magic. It's just going to be magical. I can't wait to see those. <laughs> and then, for Germany, people aren't excited about this one either, but I mean, hey, no one's unlocked it yet. So, like, you know, wait till it's fully, you know, wait till everyone has it. The Beretta M38, which I think is in Normandy, it's an Italian submachine gun. You know, it's nothing too special. I mean, but... I don't know. The Italians make some pretty good weapons. They're, they're, they've been known for that. It has a 40 round mag, so I mean, uh, damn it, my uh, spawn point got shot because I didn't get to build sandbags. Uh, give me a second here to build one. Um, oh, you're yeah, perfectly 40 fine. rounds, no, that's more than an MP40, and I think it uses the big round, you know, like the MP35 uses that mm -hmm. big ass pistol round. I oh, look, I team killed. <laughs> yeah, people say it can't happen. Isn't that it weird how be. I just team killed a few people? That's weird. Yeah, Guess I proved that one. Happen, but... Yes, I proved yeah. him wrong, huh? Well, we got that uh, out of the even way. If, even if it's not meta, it'll be nice to use something that isn't just the MP40. You know, people complain about that being in so many campaigns. But it wasn't you know, every campaign. Easy. Come on, bud. I mean, my goodness. People complain I, about using it all the time, but I'm like, isn't it 
nice to have some like same stuff you get used to it more well if they don't like the mp40 if they're tired of looking at it i guess i'll just have to try out the beretta huh i guess i'll just have to try the beretta and 40 rounds i mean hey that's that's gonna be nice too let's be real I would imagine uh, with such a small stick magazine, it'll probably have a pretty quick little reload on it. I would, I would think, it would make sense, but I, we'll see. I agree with you. I think it'll have a very fast load speed compared. Oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. Everyone's that's what, spawning. That's one of the things I like about the MP40 and the MP38 in Moscow is that they have a damn decent reload on them right yeah? that with that slow fire rate or slower fire rate plus that fast reload you can just keep putting bullets down range just to your little heart's contained just keep pop 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 why, away it's the reason why the m3 grease gun is so good too honestly oh yeah um, yep and then you have the uh of course you have um you have the mp35 which shoots a giant round and it, you know, if you love wooden furniture, I know some people are honestly picky about that. And, you know, it's up to you, your preference. It has I the love wooden, wooden furniture. furniture. Absolutely, yeah. So you can be using it in style with the Beretta, and that's going to be fun for some people. Because I know, I know some people hate the plastic deal with the MP40. You know, I don't blame you. If you like World War II, you like wooden furniture. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Everybody likes a classic, right? Who? And then... <laughs> We so we have, I'm sure, <clears throat> I'm sure they'll surprise us with some stuff on release uh, whenever it does. I'm assuming this week. I'm just going to assume because, oh. hey. Yeah, we're operating off a of conjecture, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Because, <clears throat> yeah, it's just, if every that we're on level 26 of the dev vlog. That's pretty good. I hope to see some good shit. And... Overall, I can't wait to use all these new weapons. There's not going to be exact balance, but, you know, people can find Russia having, the, Russia having the PPSH and PPD. Every one of Germany's machine guns is better. So, and you know, Germany's just sitting their asses down defending. All you need is a good machine gun. I'm just going to drop a little artillery strike on that little building. Hopefully our teammates don't walk in. But that's okay if they do. <laughs> Not, but not yeah. exactly big, but to kind of be inspired by Han Solo, uh, fast firing drum mag SMGs uh, have nothing on a good reliable, um, a good reliable MG, you know, on a bipod. Now, my goodness, so, uh, <laughs> so this is a little frustrating. Uh, apparently, I'm just dying because I'm too close to the enemy. That that's that's kind of not fun. I don't know how to get out of here without dying. Isn't that yeah. ridiculous So we just, like, got a death sentence? Wait, can you still spawn on it? No. No, it's just, now we're just dead. That 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 does need to change. That does need oh to change. Oh my god, you put the spawn point right at the edge of the point, so you can actually spawn on it still and then not die. Really? Interesting. Wow. That's that would be nice if uh, a magical red cloud just didn't kill us at any point during this <laughs> engagement, but that's a discussion we can have later. Yeah, that's... I'm more interested in the really weapons cool. right now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go on a speaker run. This is the perfect... This is the perfect point. This is the point that's make or break for the Germans. I know you've played this a few times. This yes. Reichstag map, if you can, this is the point you win on if you're gonna win the game. And if you have oh. some enemies for you, and then... Just like, I understand it's annoying people spam it, but, you know, I'm just saying, hey, mark some enemies and then it'll be easier. I'm gonna take down this enemy fighter first. You you do realize that mark mark enemy targets is probably gonna become a meme at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee it. I'm not gonna spam it in chat. That's <clears throat> I've had plenty of conversations with uh, really really impatient bomber pilots about that. Well, let's sit there and spam that son of a bitch every five seconds, and he said, "Look, look, buddy, you have eyeballs, bro." Like if I if I can spot a T thirty four, you can spot a T thirty four. Without someone marking a target, I mean you don't deserve to be a pilot. <laughs> well, don't say that too loud. You're gonna get people crying in your direction. You don't want that. <laughs> uh, yeah, you do. Um, oh, that enemy fighter is still up. I've literally dumped my whole mag into him. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's something that we're definitely gonna have to go over here and there. 
So I is that one out this foot. his friend tries to kill me? Typical, right? Are those the last weapons uh, that are going to be coming in this uh, new update, or? That's all we have devlogs for. But I mean, hey, you might see something else. I'm sure the devs will surprise us. The devs have the devs are full of surprises. Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, look at you just dropping I'm some love on the Russians. I like it. I'm full of surprises too, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I wish back gunners were in the game. That's my wish list. I'm getting my ass shot off right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, and certainly the ability to multi crew vehicles would be amazing. Like, if I could go up there with you and be your back gunner so you could just focus on bombing, you know, just focus on what you're doing and I'll keep those Lavashkins off of your. Oh! What I'm gonna try to do is I'm actually gonna try to bail out. You see that moat right there? You can actually crash land into that and your pilot will survive. Interesting, interesting. You know, I just realized... I, I just realized something. Uh, this this is... Uh, is this similar enough to that War Thunder map? In, uh, near the this Reichstag? This is that War Thunder map, exactly. Like, it's exactly the same in War Thunder. It just feels different because you're on foot rather than in a vehicle. Really interesting. It might be the color settings yeah. I have because I pretty much have uh, Saturday morning... Or Sunday morning cartoons running on this thing right now. Um, yeah, but as you can understand, um, in War Thunder, obviously the scale is different because you're in a big ass tank. But this is the exact same uh, War Thunder map. They looked at photographs and they rebuilt it piece by piece. That is so cool. The map. Um, they... There's only one notable difference on this Berlin map from real life is they. Switched one of the streets, like you know, like they just like flopped it, so it'd be better as a map. And you know, you know, I'm sure everybody can forgive a little bit of that. I mean, if it's in the interest of gameplay. Oh, hi there! I just found yeah, a Russian it's... trying to get on our point, and here's another one over here. You see him? See him right over there? Double marks accurate. You still up in that plane, bud? Nope. <clears throat> I'm gonna spawn that Stuka and try to shoot down their uh, the enemy attacker here. Hopefully. We'll see well, what I can do. As well. <laughs> we'll see what I can do here. So they always uh, come from this direction here. Oh shit! I lost my squad. Uh, go ahead. Sorry, I'm gonna take a panther. No, go ahead and focus the panther. Uh, could you give me a heading uh, on an ET-34 as you see, just in relative to your location? Yep, they're at about roughly. Um, I see one. Never mind. I see left. one. I see one. I see him. Come here, bud. The tank that should, that should kill him. Was so good with the zoom levels too. Wow. There's two markers on him. Wow. I dropped those pretty close. I guess I'm just gonna have to give him a little follow up here. But that's fine. He's tracked, so he's not gonna be going anywhere. Um, now, do you have any speculation for stuff we're gonna see in the future? Let's focus on Berlin. That's gonna be a topic. What do you expect to see in Berlin in the future that wasn't already covered in the dev blog? What do I expect to see? Mm. What do you want to see? Let's do both, because why not? Well, expectations are not really my strong suit, but we can certainly talk about what I, what I would like to see. I would very much like to see them add more bots to the game, and I know that's going to be a very sore subject for some people, but they can just suck it the hell up, because that's what makes this game unique, is it not? They can make they can make it feel even more like a war. I mean, and people complain, but the devs said it best. Is the a uh, the AI units is there's free it's free RP. Yeah, and I just got my tail shot off in one hit again. So why complain when you literally get free kills? I mean, I would <sighs> rather feel like us who can't be killed and then gets 50 kills. <laughs> Yes, and once again, this, uh, as we all know, this is meant to be an immersive experience, right? There's a reason why I can hit, well, I can't remember, is it Control-Shift-G, and you can just turn the HUD off. Yeah, just like that. I have it on video right now. And I'm just going to play like that for a little bit, so... Sorry, I can't see my map, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, you don't play like that <clears throat> but if you just want to, like, gaze upon it for a second... Um, I forgot how good the MP3008 is. I have one for my tanker, right? Because, you know, like, it's, like, just how often the tankers use guns, right? So they get the old shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, you got to get out at some point. I have my tanker right now, 
And shit, I'm doing better with this thing than I do with the MP40. Uh, I've I've read in a, a few little forum posts that people like that thing more than they like the MP40. It's supposedly a Chad weapon. <laughs> like you said, it just bugs along like an engine and just does work. Wow. You build a rally behind that little point on Berlin. That you see that little building uh, that's like about 30 meters away from the point. You can build the rally point there. And it's the closest he can get it when it's still by cover. We're gonna need one. Okay, I'm um, gonna go. I'm gonna go burn my Labelle squad here, and I'm just gonna go full ham, or not, or I'm just gonna, gonna get shot in the head. <laughs> I'm gonna take out that enemy plane here. I'm gonna heading on him. He's gonna kill so many. Yep, just wipe oh, pretty much my whole squad. Just pretty much oh, wipe my did. whole squad. Yeah. I forgot the kill feed got an update. He did get a number of kills. That was um, a, a good number, yeah. If anyone's still listening by now, I'll just quickly go through it. The Battle Pass. Now that's going to oh, be fun. Oh, yes. Let's talk about the Battle Pass. Absolutely. Uh, I never I get tired of talking about that. Honestly, Battle Passes are one of the best things about the modern gaming industry. Is I love them. <laughs> I do, too. I do, too. And... uh. Uh, in some of the dev blogs I did read, uh, they're mentioning uh, doing a lot more in the line of cosmetics, correct? Yes, and some of that is unique posters, so you can slap them on a wall. Here, uh, oh yeah, I'm going to demonstrate that right now, actually, now that you bring it up. Thank you. You have the closed beta posters, too, I assume, so yeah. Place wall po Oh, I don't have any. That's weird. I'm who knows? I can place them in Normandy, uh, but my, you know the veteran ones; those are pretty cool. It'll be Wait interesting to see what. Not in Berlin? Oh, you know what I bet happens? What's that? I bet we get different ones for Berlin. Oh. Like when it reaches open beta, I bet we get Founders Pack ones. That'll be cool. That'll be really cool. Just to just to flex on people, you know. Everybody loves flexing a little it, bit. It, 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 it's part of the and It's just it's fun. They're not immersion breaking. It's just this nice little like, it's like a Kilroy. It's like a Kilroy was here. Right. Oh my goodness. You don't know who placed it. You, like think about it in like a year or two. You don't know who placed it, but sometimes you'll see a veteran <clears throat> poster and you'll know to shit yourself because you'll be like, oh, someone who's played the game for a long time is in my battle. Yes, and something I would really like to see is, uh, you know how we have community-made objects in War Thunder and vehicles? Yeah. It would be really cool if we could have uh, some resource where people could make, like, say, charms or wall posters or whatever. And sure, it'd have to be a process of approval or whatnot to make sure people don't just put whatever they want in there. But that'd be, I think that'd, that'd be, be a good way to spark the community right just add a little bit of creativity and personalization to it huh like I mean, make like the requirement be like it has to look period specific and war thunder did that you know some of the decals in war thunder were community contests when the game came out and yes. they're still in game years later one of my favorite aircraft in that game uh the it was it the hs oh, i can't remember but you know which one i'm talking about right the night fighter that had one of the rudimentary uh radar systems and it had like two yeah, 30 yeah. millimeter cannons. Do you remember which one I'm talking about? Yeah, and then there's player skins in War Thunder. Yeah, yeah. I would like to see all sorts of stuff like that. Like, uh, I don't know uh, how to work with the Dagar engine, obviously, but uh, if we had some way to just create 3D models, you know, like uniforms, whatnot, and all sorts of I'm World not, War II buffs could. Just World War II buffs like could go on and just make whatever they want. And then we have oh, more yeah, content. Like, yeah, we can have more content. And uh, War Thunder actually does it here. I'll explain to you. You're gonna love this because it like shows how good the devs are. Is in War Thunder, there's a program Tank where down. You, you can actually make 3D models and they'll add them to the game and you'll get like a 25% commission on every purchase of that vehicle. Oh, I see. See, there you go. So the first million tank in War Thunder was just something someone made in their spare time and then showed to the devs and the devs said that's such high quality we're going to add that to the game and you're going to get paid by us and that would be a very uh, lucrative option for uh, those of us in the world who you know may it's have less, a weaker currency less, yeah 
it puts less pressure on the devs to have their own in-house modeling and pay for it all the time. Because yeah, a lot of it, now you get 25% commission, but you do it as a passion project. You don't need paid hourly for it. No, no. A commission will, work is how will, that works. People will do it for fun because they love the game so much. Yeah, I'd just do it just to see my, my stuff in the game. Ooh, that's a nice drop. <laughs> I got the Luger. I got one Luger and one Mouser C96 that I, I rarely pull out. So I, sometimes I remember I have them and I'm like, I guess I'll use it. I love that Mauser. That is one of my favorite pistols. I mean, obviously it inspired Han Solo's pistol, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> even, even without that, it's T-34 right there. Um, even without that, it's just a cool gun. It uses a stripper clip. Did you uh, Do you watch you know, Forgotten Weapons on YouTube at all? Have you seen his yeah, channel, Ian's? I think it's annoying when people treat him like he's the only one who knows about guns, but he is fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, that's why I watch him. I mean, most of the time I already know whatever it is he's going to tell me because obviously I've done a little work with firearms in my life, but he's just a, a really cool, soft-spoken... You know, he presents the information in just a such a professional yet entertaining way. I mean, he's so thorough in the way he takes apart weapons. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just when when he has opinions, though, people will take it too far, but if you just watch it without listening to other people, it's fun, for sure. That's kind of how I like to try and live my life, right? <laughs> I just try and ignore what other people think, because it's <laughs> it's not usually t anything too good anyway, right? Opinions usually ruin things. Yeah. Like, I'll love something, and then I'll hear someone's opinion on it, and I'm like, oh, I hate it now, because you made it annoying. <laughs> well, you so know... So that's what I do, just ignore it. There's a reason um, people say opinions are like assholes, right? <laughs> and sorry to the community who's listening. I mean, this is our first episode after all, but the battle pass we're going to talk about here, I just remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. I'm sorry for getting you off track there. <laughs> That's all right. Order for weapon upgrades is good because you know what? I don't want to scum my way with a radio squad just so I can upgrade my G43. And, that, but that, I don't want to try my luck for hours with bronze orders to get a four-star one. So having right. an order is going to be such a nice thing for people who don't want to play certain squads. Yeah, and uh, you know, people do. Most people enjoy scumming with artillery, but I, I understand. Most of the time, I don't play my bomber squads. I don't know why. It's, usually, I just prefer the explosive pack if I'm going to take a tank exactly. out, and I can put that on anybody. But yeah, if I could level my bombers or the weapons uh, with an order instead of playing the damn things, I, I I could I could be hip to that for sure. Must be fit use the curve on some of them, like mortar squads. It takes forever to level them up, but if you can, I I you know if someone wants to play mortar, they can. I'm not gonna judge them. So having the <laughs> option to level it like that, though, I was gonna say my opinion, but you know I'm not gonna hate on someone for having a play style. It's why it's in game. Correct, correct, and I'm very hopeful that we see some sort of uh, another support class. Like, obviously, medic would be, you know, the obvious choice, but I'm sure they might do come like up with something medic, else. I think what they should do for medics is they're like engineers, but they can build a little proximity-based healing thing. You know, Ooh. like that that you know that buff or that perk that gives you like a hundred percent healing uh, outside of battle. Uh, yes. Something like that. But it's a proximity thing, so it can heal like someone's whole squad up. That would be something useful. Good job. Thank you. There's a chance we're gonna win this. There is a chance. Saying... Now, um, I don't, I don't believe in uh, jinxing, so we're gonna be all right. We'll just stay focused and keep them off the standpoint. They're demoralized at this like, point. You can tell. It's like we're either gonna lose or we're either gonna win. So you can't jinx it. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, the battle pass, the PDM 42. It's an experimental SMG that was meant to be the replacement for the PPSH. T-34 down. Now, I don't know, if, but if you ask me, it looks like it's just a PPS. Now, I'm not going to hate on it. If you want it or you like Russia, go for it. Battle Pass weapons aren't supposed to be meta. They're supposed to be fun. Of course. Yeah. I mean, everything in this game is meant to be fun. I mean, that's... and it. I hate that word meta. I'm just going to say it. I hate the word... Uh, this isn't Counter Strike, you know. This it's just meant to be fun. Exactly, but of course, you know, I gotta still mention it's not gonna be a game changer, is what I guess I'm trying to say here. It's not gonna be a game changer, but 
you know, even if it's not, the battle pass weapons are fully leveled up guns. Which so will make I mean, them better than a one star for sure, absolutely. It gets, it's a free max star gun, so I mean, hey, that's awesome. Well, you can't, whatever, whatever way you cut it. I just think that um, just the idea of having more guns should never offend anybody. Like, I mean, there's just more toys. Like, why would you get upset about <laughs> having more toys to play with? Even if you're someone is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I am excited about the... I'm, I'm taking us off track a little bit, kind of, but the T-50, I'm excited to face. I'm excited to face That's that tank. Like, there's so many enemies that I'm excited to battle against, and a lot of people are like, oh, I won't play it, so I don't care. I'm like, I just think, even if you don't play Russian, you're going to be fighting this weapon now, so you're going to have to relearn some of your strategies or you're going to be able to pick it up off the ground. You know, I did that in the closed beta a lot to try out the Russian pre-order gun, as I pick them up off the ground to play them. That's, that's a pretty decent idea. I always forget that you can pick up people's weapons. I don't know why. Probably because I die before I expend my ammunition, but you know. <laughs> I do like that you can't rearm it, because in real life, if you're using an enemy's gun, it's because you're desperate. You're not just going to have all of his ammo sitting in your ammo pack. Not unless you're in a situation where you have time to loot his corpse, yeah. Oh, look! My tail got shot off again. Oh, wait, no, I'm still good. I'm still good. That's, that's exactly it that some people don't realize. When you pick up the gun, all you have is what's in the gun, which the game represents well with the, just, like, the one meg. Yeah. Oh, oh wow, I just watched your body blow up. Um, but, yeah, you have your one meg. Yep. That you I just bombed that LA-5. You see that? <laughs> <laughs> I did that on purpose. I knew he was going to fall for that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, so, yes. One minute till victory. Um, but yeah, PPS, or uh, P -P PDM42, sorry. It looks like it's just going to be PPS, but it's still going to be a gun. It so looks, if it, you like Russian, go for it. And it has a larger magazine, does it not? I mean, what does the first one come with, like, 20 uh, plus one in the chamber? I can't remember. It's been a little while, little while since I didn't have the drum magazine PPD. <laughs> that thing is a I blessing. Think, I think this is just the standard magazine that's already existing, because it was meant to replace, like, the PPD slash PPSH. So it's going to be similar in, like, every way, essentially. Beautiful. But, um, I'm so glad it's in-game because, hey... The whole point of Gold Orders is to be rare guns that weren't seen often. Not necessarily unique, but just rare. Right, right, right. And that's what makes them special, right? You look in the kill feed and you go, what the hell is that damn thing? Hey, look, we won us Germany. Isn't that cool? I guess it right can be done. That's so we've, we've established in uh, one match that you can actually friendly fire with fucking bombs. <laughs> you can do that. And you can win us Germany on Berlin. Hell, I got... Over 26,000 experience for that. How much you get? Hello? <laughs> we cut off for a little bit. Are you there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Wow. Hey, you just cut that honestly. Uh, here, I'll go on. Uh, you can just seamlessly edit this with your magic. So next up on the battle pass, we got the M2A1 carbine. Now, this is a different sight than the normal M2. And a metal stock. Now, even if it is just a copy paste, there's something so chad about a metal stock. Oh, absolutely. Some of my favorite uh, guns that I own in real life I have the, those metal stocks, and generally they are collapsible, like uh, the Uzeal. Yep. Have you, ever, you can yeah. use it as like a hip fire. And the M2 carbine. That's an assault rifle. It's not a scaled down rifle bullet, but it is a scaled up pistol bullet. So it counts as an assault rifle because it's an intermediate round. That's the one thing that an assault rifle needs is an intermediate round to be considered. Um, well, I mean, it's, so yeah. it's, it's a classification, you know, and it is interesting that we do get to see uh, that intermediary gap between submachine guns and rifles in late World War II, and I, I imagine that's why people are so excited for Berlin, is because of that that weapon that, is, that did not exist. Yes, you're watching you're the watching evolution the of weapons. weapons. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, awesome. Uh, but yeah, 30 round mag, and different sights. They could be better, could be worse. I don't know how they look in real life, but either way, 
that metal stock is going to be fun. You know, squad leads are the ones that had M2s in World War II. So slap that on the pair, on you know, the first airborne. Give your squad leader the M2A1. Boom, you, you have the authentic, you know, paratrooper squad. Oh, I give can't wait to play with that Tommy thing. Guns. Yeah, oh. give the squad leader the M2A1. Give the rest of them Tommy guns. You literally have the first airborne, like as they were in World War II. I'll be looking um, forward to unlocking the Tommy gun. Have you played with that thing yet? I'm close to getting it. No, I, I gave up at like level 20, but I'll come back. Uh, <laughs> I think that this metal does. I think the sweats will all go to Berlin. Which, uh, while I'll be playing Berlin a lot, Normandy will be like my getaway. Kind of like Moscow is uh, currently for Normandy. I go to Moscow all the time. Every time I get mad at Normandy, I just go, all right, it's Moscow. <laughs> it's just a different, different flavor. If I need a relief from Berlin, I'll just Normandy. That's what I love. People say it's going to kill the game having different campaigns. Having lower player count in certain campaigns won't kill it. I mean, even if there's only 40 people playing <clears throat> a certain campaign, that's enough to fill up a server. Well, thank, you only thank, need one server. <laughs> think about it this way. Think about it this way. How many different lobbies exist in War Thunder? Right? How many different BR ranges are there? I'm How many different? Right now, there's probably over a hundred because you have naval. You have no. Yeah, there's over a hundred yep. different lobbies you can be in with the BRs and naval and air, at air, least a hundred. And uh, arcade and realistic and sim. So and and guess what? That game didn't always have the player base it does now, but I never had an issue. Even if you have to wait for a game for two minutes, you'll still get a game. That's not long to wait. No, and uh, it always makes me laugh. I uh, I queued up for Lone Fighters, and the queue was like two minutes. And, I, and the first thing that came to my mind is, wow, this is a lot faster in Ground RB and War Thunder or Air RB, <laughs> or heaven forbid, uh, Air Sim. My goodness, I love Air Sim, but you you got to wait a minute to load into it sometimes, especially in the non-peak hours. But that's just yeah, what happens I'm, when you have I'm too many done. game modes, right? I'm done with the gameplay for now. Like I think after this. After I talk about the battle pass, I think that's a good place to end. Yeah, um, yeah, we can end it here. Uh, this video is about to eat up my hard drive anyway, I'm sure, so I'm going to end it. Uh, it was lovely t uh, speaking oh, to you. I was going to mention the other battle pass guns. There's only two more, if that's all right. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, continue, please. I'm just not going to, if we can just not queue up for a game, and I'm going to pull up that dev announcement if I can here. Yeah, but ca continue K talking, 26. please. The KP-26, uh, that is going to be the German Moscow gun. Oh, I forgot to mention, um, the PDM is going to be in Moscow and Berlin, so you're skipping years ahead with this thing. That's going to be cool. Oh, yes, it um, will, absolutely. The KP-26, that magazine is definitely curved, like, weirdly. That is cool. Um, uh, it's a Finnish, it's the Su Sumo or Sumi. I'm going to try to pronounce that one. I think I Sumi. Sue me um, sounds about good because somebody might try and sue you if you mispronounce it. <laughs> um, you know, German players have been requesting this thing forever, and justifiably so. I mean, Russia gets the PDM. This is basically the or Russia gets the PPD. This is the German PPD essentially. And if you look at it, that's going to be good. That's got a large magazine. Even if you get one of them. Even if you just get one, that's still going to be a game changer. Your squad leaves mainly the guy who survives the longest. You know, oh, the guy you play as? He's usually oh. the last one alive anyways, so that's going to be a good gun to have. And I'm very curious exciting. how many... Are you aware of how many rounds that magazine holds? It's a pretty uh, damn large magazine. Well, I mean, I, yeah, let me look it up right now. <laughs> I'll let you do the looking up because I don't want my search history to offend anybody. This is a PG-13 show after all. <laughs> I'll edit that out. <laughs> the KP-26 on the gun wiki. Um, let's see. 36 oh, the gun wiki. I mean, that's not bad. 36 rounds? That's, that's pretty more decent. Than, more than the MP-40 and it fires faster, so it'll even it out. Does um, it, and I imagine the caliber is... Uh, Fairly fairly large, too, is it not? I, I believe the Fens use pretty large pistol cartridges for the SMGs, did they not? I think I think it's a pretty large pistol, yeah. Like, comparable to probably 45 ACP, if I were to guess. Ooh. Um, so we, we should expect it to be able to reach out and touch people a little bit. That's exciting. Yep. And then for Normandy, which will be actually interesting, because they don't have a comparison, and in Berlin, which will compete with the VG-15, 
I don't know if this will be a rifle or, or an assault weapon. You know, like a trooper or an assaulter weapon. But Correct. All right, right. 43 with 7.9 curves. They literally, the Germans somehow managed to weld an SDG 44 mag onto a G43 rifle and rechamber it somehow. Oh, so the um, magazine is welded to the gun? That's interesting. Oh, oh that's bigger. Sorry. It's, oh. <laughs> they can, you can pull it out still, but they managed to, like, jerry rig. You know, because they're the jerrys, ironically. They managed to jerry rig uh, and basically an SDG 44 into a G43. So there you have it. This is going to be basically a German M1 carbine, if you think about it. They both use intermediate rounds. They both have large magazines. And this one a bit larger. <laughs> yeah, they're both going to be semi-auto, so... I mean, it's going to be just like the VG-15. They're both semi-auto. They both have SDG mags, and they're both assault rifles. But, you know, if this is a trooper gun, you're going to be able to give it to one of your riflemen. And if it's not, it's still going to be unique. And you can even use it in Normandy if you want. You know, you have to choose between which one you want it in, but hey... It's gonna be awesome, regardless. Now I'm ass- I'm assuming if you can use the M2 carbon, excuse me for interrupting the the M2A1. I, I would assume you'd be able to use on engineers. That'll be a great engineer weapon. Yeah, because you only have one engineer in your squad, and you want to assure his safety. So I usually give him a really good gun. Oh, me too. You know, I pack an engineer everywhere I go. It's essential. Yep, it really is. This is stuff you'll see soon. If we'll talk about them when they come out, we can actually see them. Uh, yes. You can get a rank 5 soldier, and then gold, they're fully leveled, slightly modified, and unique camo tanks, and then one aircraft for Germany. And that's we're going to see more about that when it's fully released, but hey, that's pretty interesting, not going to lie. Yeah, and that's yeah, a... that was a good episode, so thank you for you know talking with me. I think we got, I think we covered some good stuff, man, and I hope people see this. Well, I mean, we'll just have to share it around the dark corners of the internet, and uh, I think people will enjoy this, uh, because people enjoy podcasts, and this is kind of just taking it to a different level, right? Where That gameplay, it, you can sit there and watch it, and I think it was entertaining. I, I thought it was pretty fun bombing all those D3485s. That was cool. <laughs> those were good battles, like, and even, yeah. like, you can see me in the Kelsey Bowl time. So, yeah, good battles overall, man. And, yeah, thanks... And thank you. Uh, uh, you're a perfect first guest. Uh, that was very amicable. I enjoyed it. I'm sure you did. Yeah. Um. You want to keep talking after it? You can probably edit this up. But yeah, you want to keep talking for a little bit? It's only 12. Like, it's early for me still. Oh, yeah, sure. I just, you know, have to use the restroom like a normal human being and end this recording, <laughs> as I'm about to do right now. So, uh, sign. Uh, this is Seven and... Signing off. Signing off. Love y'all bunches. Catch you later.